Welcome to the Run the Tape podcast, your one-stop shop for music industry news, artists, interviews, and industry hot takes from the perspective of up-and-coming independent artists. I'm your host, T. Nikki Page, artist and overall music fanatic. You know what? I realized I've never really formally introduced myself to y'all. I'm Nikki. I'm a storyteller at heart and a vocalist by trade with a soft spot for Billie Holiday on vinyl, Stevie Wonder, songs in the key of life, Afrobeats, and female rappers from every era. To me, music is a lifelong love affair. It's a sacred form of connection. It's a tool that allows us to put sound to our feelings with the ability to unite us through the power of resonance, not divide us. So I have to be transparent with y'all. Music news has been quite a gloomy place for the past month or so. From artist beef after artist beef, crypto crashing, artists trying to create to appeal to algorithms instead of audiences, tragic losses of artists we love, controversial topics in politics. It has just seemed to be a bad news story after a bad news story, which is why for this episode, I just want to get back to the music. Welcome to the episode about good news. These topics and more, let's run the tape. Good news in the American music market. According to Billboard, music stocks rise on positive inflation news. Inflation is still historically high, but encouraging news on the United States Consumer Price Index rallied stocks on Thursday. Many music companies' stocks soared on Thursday on news that United States inflation was less than expected in October. And the Bureau of Labor Statistics revealed that the Consumer Price Index actually rose by 0.4%. So hopefully we continue to see... Uh, positive inflation news affecting the music market. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, y'all. In other music news, the UK music industry is planning to implement an anti-racism code of conduct starting in 2023. A 2021 report found racist abuse and racial inequality across the industry, and the UK music industry anti-racism code aims to protect and represent black and ethnically diverse musicians and workers. A new code of conduct to eliminate racism in the music industry will be adopted in 2023, designed by the Black Lives and Music and organizations set up to address inequality in jazz and classical spaces for black musicians. And the UK Music Industry Anti-Racism Code will cover issues around pay, inclusion, and safety for black, Asian, and ethnically diverse members of that sector. Supported by the Independent Standards Authority, the code will stand for all of those working in the music industry in UK, from freelance technical staff to artists working for large companies, labels and organizations plan to commit to creating a safe working environment for all to strive for inclusion over diversity and to undertake mandatory training, data collection and accountability processes. This is the type of stuff that I like to see in every industry. The music industry is no different. We will always continue to be advocates for inclusion and equality around these parts. So I love to see it. Good steps in the UK. I would love to see that in America. According to BBC News, Jamaica has banned music and TV that glorifies crime such as drug and gun use. Jamaica's Broadcasting Authority has banned content that glorifies illegal activities such as drug and gun use. The new rules cover TV and radio, including music, and a list specific topics that are off limits like scamming, drug abuse, and illegal use of firearms. They can't be promoted and... Swearing or near sounding swear replacements are also being banned. But the strict nature of the ban has been criticized by some artists who argue that music is a reflection of life and say that it may put some restrictions on their free speech. But it comes with high levels of violent crime in Jamaica in 2021. The island had one of their highest murder rates in Latin America and the Caribbean in 2021. And they're hoping that by limiting the violence that is on music and television, that the crime rate will lower. So I understand artists not wanting to be censored in what they have to say, but I probably would challenge artists to think about the impact that their music may have on the things that happen in the world. I don't know. Chime in, y'all. What do y'all think? Do you think that this is a good thing or do you think that it's a bad thing? I personally think that we're living in some times where we are just seeing too much violence. And I don't think that youth especially need anything that encourages them to live a 
live a, a violent lifestyle or glorifies legal activity any more than uh, than what we're experiencing right now. I think that um, we could use some music that has more positive messages. But I do also agree that music is a reflection of life and that people should have the freedom to share their stories how they see fit. So chime in. Give me some feedback, y'all. You think this is a good thing or is this a bad thing? One thing about me, I am a film buff, okay? And I'm a film buff who goes to the movies to nerd out over the score. There is something about hearing the score of the film in the cinema and hearing it in Dolby Atmos surround sound for me that just gets me every time. Is it just me? Or does anybody else still get excited about amazing film scores and soundtracks? The top film scores and soundtracks of the season so far go to the following films for me. Tar. It's a film starring Kate Blanchett as the iconic composer Lydia Tar, one of the greatest living composers and conductors, as well as the globally renowned first queer female chief conductor of a major German orchestra. Obviously, this is a film about a contemporary classical composer, so I really wouldn't expect the score to be anything less than divine, and it truly delivers. The soundtrack is a concept album composed by the same composer of the Oscar-winning score for the 2019 blockbuster Joker, who happens to be one of four women to ever win in that category, and it features both music from and inspired by the film, as well as a Kate Blanchett-conducted rehearsal of Mahler's Fifth Symphony. As a lover of a good old school hit and a good retro aesthetic, Don't Worry Darling soundtrack didn't disappoint, featuring 1950s hits from Ray Charles, Dizzy Gillespie, and Ella Fitzgerald. It's set in a slightly earlier era of the 1930s. The soundtrack for Amsterdam, starring Margot Robbie, Christian Bale, and John David Washington, was a standout as well. Honorable mentions to the soundtracks for The Woman King starring Viola Davis and Black Adam of the DC Universe starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, both showcasing stellar scores for action-packed cinematic masterpieces. And while we're speaking of action-packed, the soundtrack for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. It feels like the ancestors are singing to me from the big screen, okay? And after six years without new music from Rihanna, we finally got two new tracks entitled Lift Me Up and Born Again from the Black Panther Wakanda Forever soundtrack. We've also received amazing news about new releases and tour dates from older artists that we love that we haven't heard from in a while, like Paramore, who released the title song from their first LP since 2017 called This Is Why. Also, Sade are reportedly recording new music. Sidebar, I cannot be the only one who grew up thinking Sade was a single person. I was most definitely an adult once I realized that that was a whole band. Anyways, the band fronted by Sade Adu, they've not released a new album since 2010 and they haven't released new songs since 2018. So I am so excited to hear new music from them. And R&B legend Anita Baker has also promised new music as she announces a huge multi-city tour to celebrate the 40th anniversary of her music career. 40 years is a long time to have that much success in the music industry and for people to still love the songs that you sing. This tour will kick off on February 11th in 2023 in Hollywood, Florida, visiting every major city in the U.S. And her return to the stage marks the first that she successfully got back the rights to her masters in 2021. So that's a victory for her, okay? The tour also marks her first official slate of live performances since the collection of farewell shows she performed in the beginning of 2018 and the Anita Baker concert she played a decade prior. So we really haven't seen Anita Baker give a full tour since 1995. So she will be in a city near you next year with some special surprise guests. And I am so excited to hear what Miss Anita Baker has to show us after all this time. This week at the round table, we're keeping the vibrations high and we're talking about the power of music to heal. The power of music to heal ourselves, the power of music to heal our environments. 
We're speaking to four different artists from different genres about their personal experiences with the power of music and how it's healed them and how they use it to heal their audiences, to provide them with good vibrations of love, peace, understanding, resonance, the whole nine yards. But before we start, before we get into it, let's listen to Conservative's latest single, Lighter. music is very powerful like i think because you can control a crowd with it you know it could keep you out the streets like there's a lot of things about music i feel like that make it very powerful when it comes to like how uh, blake said too like how it can instantly put you in a better mood or a deeper mind like like you know it would just make you like there's been days where i went to work and i wasn't really feeling it and i just threw a project on and i just started to kind of like gravitate back to my good self and you know my mind started to come back i think music is a very powerful thing even with the influence that it gives, like sometimes it's like the, the good or the bad influence, like music is a really powerful thing. It, it can shape a whole nation. Actually for me, it's like Nipsey Hustle. Like if I put on some nip and I spend like a long night and I wake up and gotta go to work, I just put on some nip and I just like, just listen to the vibe. And, you know, I just start to kind of feel like, I don't know, especially if you know, you have past trauma, past things that have uh, kind of stuck with you through the years, you know, music can kind of help you like, not be blind to those things, but it helped you to overcome them over time, you know, because like I said, the stuff is rela relatable. I think it's something about being in a vulnerable space with yourself. You know, after my brother passed, I had his guitar. I moved to Colorado and I started working on farms and was just living, you know, in the country by myself uh, with a lot of time, you know, just in here and in nature. And I think that's the most important thing is getting to sit down and have that individual space to yourself, you know, to find your sound. The space speaks more than the music. You know, for me, the, the music was all written at a time when I was experiencing a lot of healing. And uh, it's been a very healing time playing all the songs on the album. And what I want the listener to get is the experience of being healed, you know, by a, something that's alive you know, the irrefutable effect that music can have, not only on your feelings, but curing the incurable in a way. Like, you know, the first thing you mentioned is approaching curing Alzheimer's and dementia with music, you know? And uh, that's something I've been curious to get into more is uh, expanding into how frequencies can heal people and just how the music can heal people. And something so simple as playing a guitar with your fingers and just space around it. You know, it's almost more about the silence than the music, but finding the way that the vibrations of that can heal people from things, you know, the incurable in your mind or um, physical illnesses and stuff like that. I think there's a lot of 
I've started to see a lot of that. You know, I guess I see on Instagram a lot of people connecting uh, synthesizers to mushrooms with electrodes, you know, and you see the mushrooms start to go bleep, bleep, bleep. And applying that kind of stuff to, you know, the living theory of how music affects all of us living creatures, you know, in ways that we can apply to make the world a better place. How do you think that artists can can make sure that they're making music that has a positive impact? Uh, because I do think that artists, it, as we know the power of music, we have uh, we have the ability to contribute to that. So how do you think that we can make sure that we're making a positive impact on the world with our music? I've always felt that live performance is so important. And uh, I, heard, I heard someone say, if, if the majority of music you're listening to is recorded, then you're missing something in your life. And I think through the coronavirus pandemic, a lot of us, you know, found that, started to really feel what it's like to miss that. So uh, there's nothing like the healing power of music in person. And I think the, the, commun the communal ritual of getting together and uh, all getting locked into a vibe together, whatever it is, that's missing from a lot of music today that's become very popular. Very profound words on the power of music and healing from the members of 45 Redline. You can check out their latest EP, Dark Moon, on all streaming platforms and at 45 Redline on Instagram. As well as Royce Zorzi, who just shared a very moving personal experience with the healing power of music while writing his latest Americana album entitled Denver, which you actually just heard the first single from entitled Denver. You can find him everywhere online at RoysterZorzi.com. Here's some really awesome music technology news. A pioneering new prototype allows those with hearing loss to listen to music through the sense of touch. People with hearing loss will be able to listen to music through the sense of touch thanks to a pioneering prototype that's been devised by researchers at the Department of Electronics at the University of Malaga, members of the R&D group Electronics for Instrumentation and Systems. It consists of an audio tactile algorithm that by using tactile illusions renders monophonic music into tangible stimuli based on vibration. It's like hacking the nervous system to receive a different response to this real stimulus scent, they say. Basically, what they want to achieve long term is for people who don't hear to be able to listen to music. The researchers insist on the power of music to influence mood, as well as its possibilities as a therapy for mental disorders and treatment of pain. This would result in a portable terminal that would be brought to a concert or a live festival event since this prototype, according to the researchers, can be easily transferable to technological devices such as cell phones. That means that people who don't have the ability to hear will still be able to feel the music at a concert. They'll be able to feel the music at a festival. That's amazing. This algorithm is developed by a young researcher and it's capable of converting musical features and structures extracted from MIDI files to vibrational stimuli. So basically it extracts the music from a MIDI file and converts it into vibration for the people to actually be able to feel the music. Something like this is a game changer. 
when it comes to making music events inclusive for everybody. I mean, wow. In other musical science news, a new exhibition at Manchester Science and Industry Museum is asking visitors to match certain types of music with tastes. Curator Stephen Leach's Music Meets Food exhibit is a really fun way of interpreting an actual serious piece of research done by Charles Spence, who is the head of Crossmodal Research Laboratory at Oxford University. It's a model for much of this new exhibition called Turn It Up, which takes the research being done into effects of music at universities across the world and tries to make it accessible for a general audience because Stephen Leach discovered that in audience testing, they discovered that the majority of people, unless they actually played an instrument or could be music or were musically inclined in some way they felt unmusical and they were completely ignoring the impact of music in their lives and how central it is to culture so the exhibition is about the way music affects our bodies minds and drives us to innovate and create and share and he's hoping that combining music with food that almost everyone will realize that they're actually musical and that they have an emotional response to what they hear. This is a very unique approach because prior to learning about this particular exhibition, I never really thought about what the uh, sound of a strawberry would sound like, but it's actually very interesting and somehow accurate. So if you're interested in this music meets food approach, I really recommend checking out the work that's happening at the Manchester Science and Industry Museum, especially with this particular exhibition called Turn It Up by Stephen Leach. Very interesting and super creative. Just a man, just a man Just a man. You can find his music streaming on all platforms and you can find him on www.wadadaboy.com. We're back at the round table with Dr. Jeffrey P. Key with his single, Sparkle Like 24 Karat Gold, and some very moving words on the power of music. You can check out Dr. Jeffrey P. Key at www.pastorforthemaster.com. Let's hear what he has to say. Really 
have a sense of passion or an affinity for love, it speaks to them. Because I, I use a biblical scripture about what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. But on the other hand, I believe that love is the universal language that all of us understand. This is something that is birthed inside of you. So um, I, I graduated as a preacher for social change at United Theological Seminary, which means that I was more concerned not just with, with only, uh, you know, the gospel of Jesus Christ and Jesus said, but I'm more concerned about what people go through in their daily lives. I'm concerned about the vestiges, the barriers that have kept us bound and oppressed. I'm, I'm concerned about the liberation of all people. And I believe that this is a universal language of love that we all can understand and that we all can have a common thread to say, I understand that. You know, it was uh, a friend of mine who has a dog by the name of Royal and uh, I have a bass guitar and when I was creating this song this particular King Corso would just lick my hands and, and, and those who probably would a lot of people would not understand this but some would but the affirmation of having that um, someone there who was I would say a companion dog or whatever to be there, to just, every time I start playing a song, Royal would come right there and listen and feel the vibration of what was happening and motivated me in this particular song by being right there with me and, and I could feel the love from, um, I never thought I would say anything like this before, but from a dog being there, being supportive and was loving the music so much that I created this song. It was amazing. So um, it's just amazing. And Royal was right there affirming that this is it. I feel this. And, and, and this is a song for the universe. And it's a song that everyone could relate to, whether it's, it's, it's pets or whether it's um, people from different generations, different cultures. It doesn't matter. Love is a universal language that we all understand. It expresses the times when we are sad. It expresses the times when we are mad. It expresses the times when we are glad. It expresses the time when we are, are doing things that may seemingly are bad. But it is that language and the story that we connect with and we recognize it transcends a particular hue, a particular uh, religious denominational affiliation. It transcends all of that. It's a language that speaks to our heart and we know when we hear it that we've had a connection with something that transcends us into something that catapults us into a reality of something that is beyond what perhaps we could ever express in words. But we hear it in music that resonates in our hearts and it moves in our souls. Uh, in, in my side of the world, I'm actually from Kathmandu, Nepal. And um, Soam is supposed to be this kind of... Um, uh, maybe a hallucinogenic, almost like an empowering agent. Uh, it's very uh, persistent within um, uh, Southeast Asian cultures. Um, you know, uh, actually the old Iranian called it Hom, I believe, Homa, uh, actually with an H. Um, but it's essentially something that you're supposed to take. And uh, in the old Vedic traditions, at least that's how I uh, started uh, getting familiar with it. Um, and it kind of like expands almost like an ayahuasca uh, uh, kind of element. It kind of expands your, um, your sensory abilities and your, basically your imagination uh, in a sense and uh, taps into this uh, certain kind of world, right? A lot of the Vedic literature was written. A lot of the Rishis were on Som when they had their little um, Vedic discoveries. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of talk in music about, you know, where does the sound come from? Where does the lyric come from, right? So I thought it was going to be a very cool, interesting concept um, to have this, uh, uh, essentially this, this, this plant, what, what, what most people theorize as this plant, um, to talk about this different alternate um, uh, axis of the mind. That's where the most musical uh, uh, realities exist on. Um, so the different themes of the different songs, um, I would imagine makes them feel, you know, differently uh, after every song while still focusing on the theme. But 
if I had to, I guess, I suppose, put in an overarching message, an overarching message, I would say uh, just a feeling of maybe uh, something that you've heard before, a feeling of familiarness, I would imagine, is, you know, me being from so many places, uh, the initial focus, of course, is, oh, my God, look at how different Nepal is from Chicago, right? You know, uh, but then you stay there for a bit and you realize you know, people's problems uh, tend to be kind of similar, you know, no matter where you go and what, what you do. So if you listen through uh, the album, you'll hear different themes, but I feel like the songs will be relatable um, it, it, to just everyday people, you know. I think, so for me, writing is essentially generally what I'm thinking about, right? Um, so I think there's a level of, uh, impossibility to de de detach those you know i have a song in the album called war will never end it was written about um the nepali civil war in nepal uh when i was growing up very political you know in, in that sense but really it's about um uh just the act of somebody who's actually having to fight the war no matter where you land on the side you know you can be pro, pro positions negative positions whatever it is so i think for artists that get inspired um by social situations, they should totally write songs about social situations. You know, I think whatever it is that has gotten you into a position when you're, because I'm also a performing artist and a songwriter, you know, um, when I'm writing a song, I'm most certainly uh, thinking about uh, tunes or ideas that appeal to me. And I think anything else would be kind of dishonest. Very interesting perspective from folk rock artist Soam. You can find him on Instagram at Soam Music. That's S-O-H-M Music. This is why I love doing this show, y'all. I love sitting down and speaking to artists from every genre of music, from every walk of life. It is having real conversations about things that we can agree on. And the one thing that we can agree on is music. The one thing we can agree on is the positive impacts that music has had on all of our lives. So this episode, I hope that you felt the love. I felt I hope that you felt the love and the encouragement and the passion from every guest. I hope that you learn something new that's happening in the world of music that inspires you instead of discourages you or makes you sad. There's so much good happening in this world. There's so many different things that are happening in the music industry that aren't just the Billboard Top 100. It's not just the Top 40. It's not just the stuff that you hear on the radio or on TikTok. People are developing new technology that makes people who have never been able to hear music feel music. They're doing studies that allow music to heal people in ways that we have never seen before to cure the uncurable there's people who are creating more equity in music that are creating ways for people to have more opportunity and equality in music people are figuring out what the sound of a strawberry is there's so much happening in this world that's not just beef that's not just algorithm that's not just violence that's not just bad news all the time so I hope I really hope that you listened to this episode and you just felt some joy in your life today that was my goal I really hope you felt that and I don't normally do this but I'm gonna play one of my songs for y'all so here is my latest single that's on all streaming platforms it's called love you right for my upcoming solo exhibition entitled earthing you can find me at www.thenikkipage.com and at tnikkipage on all social media platforms, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, tnikkipage. I hope you enjoy it.
dress me second chances we can play this cause what would the neighbors think and what would your mama say so we said we drive no passion in your eyes You win. 